Hello. In this presentation, I am going to take you through the working capital cycle, also known as the cash operating cycle or cash conversion cycle. The working capital cycle refers to the period of time that a company is deprived of cash during a normal business operating cycle and can be used to measure the level of money tied up and the associated cost to the company. This session provides further detail to that provided in the Introduction to Working Capital presentation and it may be beneficial to watch that one first if you have not already done so. Specifically, this presentation will look at an explanation of the components of the cycle, negative working capital cycle, the importance of the cycle, how to measure the cycle, an interpretation of the cycle, and the sales to net working capital ratio. Let's look at each of these in turn. The components of the cycle. Imagine you are going to undertake a production process. Firstly, you will need some raw materials and so will order some from your supplier. Upon receipt, these will be placed in the warehouse until you are ready to start producing and will show in the accounts within raw material inventory. When you're ready to start producing, the materials will physically be transferred from the warehouse to the factory and in bookkeeping terms will be moved from raw material inventory into work in progress or WIP. Other costs incurred, for example labour and overhead, sometimes referred to as conversion costs, will also be added into the WIP account. By the end of the process, the materials have been turned into products available for sale and are moved back into the warehouse or other appropriate area to await a customer. In the accounts, the relevant amount is now showing as finished goods inventory. At such time as the goods are sold, the value will be charged to profit or loss as cost of sales. However, assuming the sale is made on credit, no money is received from the customer at this stage. Instead, the amount owed to us by the customer is added to receivables. Effectively, the costs incurred are still shown within current assets, albeit now include a profit element, i.e. are based on sales value, and have been moved from inventory to receivables. Finally, the customer settles the debt, the amount is removed from receivables, and the company has received some cash. Whilst it will vary considerably from one industry to another, it is conceivable that many days will have passed between receiving the original raw materials and receiving the customer's settlement. The only offset to this is that assuming the company is itself credit worthy, it is likely to obtain the materials on credit such that no cash will be paid out upon receipt. Rather, the amount owed to the supplier will sit in current liabilities as a trade payable for a period of time until the account has to be paid. Despite this, it is likely to be the case that for most businesses, cash for the raw materials will be paid out before cash relating to the eventual sale is received. It is this period between cash being paid out and received that is referred to as the working capital cycle. A negative working capital cycle. Notwithstanding the previous scenario, it is conceivable that an organisation could receive money from its customers before they are required to pay their suppliers. For example, a supermarket will hold items in inventory for a very short period, 
especially in the case of perishable food items. They will sell items for cash so that receivable levels are also short. Even where credit cards are used, the vendor will usually receive cash from such transactions within a few days. Finally, supermarkets have the power to negotiate extended credit terms with its suppliers, resulting in long periods of payables. This situation is sometimes referred to as a negative working capital cycle. The importance of the working capital cycle. In a previous presentation, an introduction to working capital, it was explained that profitability and liquidity were the objectives of working capital management. To date, this presentation has described that it is usual for a business to pay out to its suppliers prior to receiving in from its customers. The period between these two points is referred to as the working capital cycle and clearly puts pressure on the liquidity of the business as it is left with no cash with which to pay the bills. Additionally, there may also be an adverse impact on profit as the company may need to borrow money to finance this period. The eventual cost of this borrowing will be influenced by both the amount of cash borrowed, i.e. tied up in working capital, and the length of time it is tied up for. Accordingly, it is important that both aspects can be estimated. Measuring the cycle The amount of money tied up in the working capital cycle and therefore the amount that is needed to be borrowed is equal to the net current assets, i.e. current assets represented by inventory and receivables minus current liabilities represented by payables. In order to establish the length of time money is tied up for, it is necessary to calculate the number of days for each element individually. Once these have been calculated, the working capital cycle can be calculated as receivable days plus inventory days minus payable days. Receivable days will equal trade receivables divided by credit sales multiplied by 365, the number of days in a year. Effectively, if receivables are £90 million and sales are £360 million, this suggests that a quarter of the year's sales are still outstanding, which equates to three months or approximately 91 days, a quarter of 365. On the same basis, payable days equals trade payables divided by credit purchases multiplied by 365. Raw material days equals raw material inventory divided by raw material usage multiplied by 365. Whip days equals whip inventory divided by costs of production multiplied by 365 and finished goods days equals finished goods inventory divided by cost of sales multiplied by 365. Depending on the accounting information readily available, it may be easier and or necessary to combine the raw material whip and finished goods days into one inventory calculation expressed as inventory days will be inventory divided by cost of sales multiplied by 365. Interpreting the cycle. In arriving at the above days, a number of estimates and assumptions need to be made. For example, 
credit sales and purchases may not easily be separable from total sales and purchases and so the days are often based on totals. Similarly, raw material purchases may be used as an approximation of raw material usage. Additionally, the year-end values may not be representative of normal operations. For example, inventory levels may be high in preparation for a new product launch or an upcoming sales campaign. For these and other reasons, the number of days calculated may not be completely accurate. Having said that, Unless there is a dramatic change in the way the company operates, they are likely to be consistent from one year to the next. Accordingly, whilst the number may not be totally reliable, the trend should be. And so companies will often use the trend or movement in the days to assess the impact of control actions taken. There is no single correct answer as to what the various days should equate to. However, they are likely to be influenced by industry norms. Consequently, companies will often use industry averages or data from similar companies in the industry to gauge the appropriateness of the levels. More specifically, receivable and payable days ought to reflect the credit terms agreed with customers and suppliers respectively. Where this is not the case, tighter management controls may be required and management of receivables and payables will be covered in more detail in a separate presentation. Sales to Networking Capital Ratio the sales to networking capital ratio shows the sales that can be generated from an investment in working capital of one pound. For example, if a company has inventory of one hundred thousand pounds, receivables of two hundred thousand pounds, and payables of one hundred and twenty thousand pounds, this equates to net working capital of £180,000. 100 plus 200 minus 120. If sales are £1,260,000, this suggests that £1 of investment in working capital generates £7 of sales, 1260 divided by 180. The significance of this number is that it enables the company to estimate the additional investment that will be required as sales grow. For example, if sales are forecast to grow by 140,000 to 1.4 million pound, an additional investment of 20,000 pounds, 140,000 divided by 7, will be required bringing the total investment to £200,000. A company that fails to plan for this requirement is effectively trading beyond its means or over-trading. Thank you.